for problem number 24 of section 1.5.1, we're asked to use the intermediate value theorem to show that this polynomial B, at, uh, B of x has exactly one zero on the interval one, two. Uh, so first off, recall that the intermediate value theorem says that, um, in, a, in a sense, that if a function hits two points, it's got to hit all, two, all the points in between those. So let's see how that works here. See that B evaluated at the lower endpoint, 1, is equal to 1 plus 6 minus 3 minus 18, which is 1 plus 6 minus 3 minus 18. So we get 7 minus 3 is 4, minus 18 is negative 14, which we see is less than 0. Now, again, we evaluate this at the right-hand endpoint. Now we have 2 cubed, or 8, plus 6 times 4, or 24, minus 3 times 2, or 6, minus 18. Now we have 8, and plus 24, minus 6, minus 18 is negative 24, so this is 8, which is greater than 0. So we have one endpoint that's less than zero, another endpoint that gets sent to something greater than zero, what that means is somewhere in the middle there's going to be a point that actually hits zero. So by the intermediate value theorem, or IVT for short, B of X, or B of X has at least one zero. On the, inter on the closed interval 1, 2. Now notice that I said at least one zero. The intermediate value theorem does not guarantee that this zero is unique. It may, there may be several zeros. However, we can use a corollary in this section to show that the zero is in fact unique. Now what we're going to do is show that the function is either increasing on this interval or decreasing. So in other words, that on the interval 1, 2, that graph is doing that the graph of the function is something like this or decreasing, in which case it can only cross the x-axis once. Now the test that we use for this is we want to see is the derivative positive in this entire interval or is it negative in this entire interval? We'll try to show that one of those is true. Start out by computing the derivative. So use the power rule, gives us 3x squared plus 12x minus 3. And the derivative of any constant is 0. All right, well, we can factor out a 3 here. So you had 3x squared plus 4 minus 1. Now we want to factor this into the form x plus or minus something times x plus or minus something. And there isn't a clear way to do this, um, do this right away, so we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. I'm going to write this x minus root 1 and x minus root 2. And we'll call root 1 uh, the uh, value returned by the quadratic formula that has a positive square root. So this would be negative b or negative 4. There should be a 4x here. Now plus the square root of b squared, 16, negative 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is minus 1. That turns that into positive 4. Um, all over 2 times a, which is 1. We simplify this. We have minus 2 plus square root of 20 over 2, which then simplifies to minus 2 plus um, 2 square root 5 over 5, or over 2, excuse me. And the 2's cancel out, so we have minus 2 plus square root 5. And if we compute R2, 
uh, we'll see that the only thing that will change is this minus sign. So we have R2 is equal to minus 2 minus square root 5. Now, the value of minus square root 5 is approximately 2.23. So we can see that this is approximately minus 4.23. And R1 is approximately minus 2 plus 2.23, which is equal to 0 0.23. So now we can rewrite um, rewrite our equation here in the form b prime of x equal to 3x minus r1, which is 0 0.23, and x minus r2, which is minus 4.23, so x plus 4.23. Now, recall that we're interested in the interval 0, 1. So we want to see what is the sign of the derivative of b uh, on the interval 1, 2. We see that no matter what value we pick between 1 or 2, between 1 and 2, this part here is always going to be positive. So we're going to have positive value here. 3 is positive. And again, no matter what value here we pick here, it's going to be positive. We're going to be adding a positive number. And we'll get a positive number here. So we multiply this, all this together for any value of x in this interval we're going to get a positive value, which implies that the function is increasing. And since it's increasing, the zero that we found earlier, that we, the zero whose existence we proved, must be unique.